welcome back to my channel. So today, as you can tell from the title, we are going to be doing a super chill, chatty, get ready with me using a bunch of my current favorite products to get ready for Canadian Thanksgiving. So if you're interested in seeing how I do my makeup for Thanksgiving, I'm gonna do like a fall glam type look with a bunch of my current favorites, then just keep on watching. Now I have two technical primers. You guys know me, I swear by face primer and face prepping. I just think it's so essential. So my absolute favorite as of the last three to four months is my Lila Bia Glow Priming Oil. If you have dry skin, if you have acne prone skin, if you have dehydrated skin, this is going to be your absolute best friend. It is such a intensely hydrating formula. You can see there, it makes my hands look completely wet and glassy and it gives the skin that exact same effect. So just the dew and glow that this gives your skin is unlike anything else. I have pretty much tried every hydrating, glow-inducing primer on the market, um, at least from Sephora and the drugstore that is accessible to me here in Canada. And this is so far currently my favorite of all of those. So I absolutely love it. I highly, highly recommend it for those of you with dry skin. It's hella, hella pricey, but I really can't see myself purchasing many more hydrating primers now that I have this in my life. This and the Smashbox Primerizer, I'm set for life. That's all you need as a dry skin girl, I swear. Now that we are all insanely glowy and dewy and perfectly prepped, I'm going to go in with the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter for a Superstar Youth Glow. This has been a favorite in recent months. It's not technically a primer, it's not technically a foundation. I would equate it more to in between a primer and a glow illuminator. So this is in one fair pale, obviously, because I am so fair and pale. Um, and it has a nice big doe foot applicator. A lot of people take issue with the doe foot applicators on things that aren't concealer. If we don't take issue with them on concealer, why is it an issue that they're on other products? I don't really get it. Um, that's me personally. I don't really care. I prep my skin and my hands really nicely before I go in with makeup. So my skin is as clean as possible. My hands are as clean as possible. So I don't see an issue with it at all. So as you can tell, I just go in with this on the high points of my face that I like to highlight. I like a super glowy forehead. So I go in with it a little bit above the arch of the brow, down the nose, on the cupid's bow, and obviously on the highlight portion of my cheeks. So I'm just gonna go ahead and blend this in. I personally like my skin to look more wet and glass-like if I can. Um, just because I have such dry skin, that is the look that I like in makeup. And I like that certain products can help me achieve that. So this is one of those that really helps me fake that glow from within. You can use this when you're not wearing makeup as well. And it just makes your skin look really, really nice healthy, flawless, beautiful. So our skin is fully prepped now. We have gone through all our prepping steps. I think it's so, so important to make sure your skin looks good before you go in with complexion. That's just me. It makes a really big difference. But now let's jump into actual complexion product. We have used a fair amount of high-end products in our prepping, but our actual base complexion is going to be very, very affordable products. So I have my current one of my current foundations at the moment. This is the Maybelline 24 Hour Foundation. Mine is in 102 Fair Porcelain. I freaking love this. It's so full coverage and flawless. And then my Holy Grail CoverGirl True Blend uh, Concealer, and mine is in L100 Fair Porcelain. And we are just going to apply this to the face. You'll see how intense the coverage is. So this was one full pump down um, should give me coverage on most of my face. The coverage on this is insane, but the foundation still allows for my prepping, hydrating steps to shine through and make my skin look really healthy, which I love. I would love to know what you guys are doing for Thanksgiving. Um, obviously, Thanksgiving in the States doesn't happen until mid to late November. I want to say it's like the weekend of the 20th. But for me, as I'm sure for many of you, Thanksgiving's gonna look a little bit different this year as it should with uh, Corona going on. 
I know for me, I'm not having a traditional Thanksgiving turkey stuffing dinner at all. Um, I'm not seeing either sets of my grandparents at all, which is super unfortunate because I do work at Sephora, I work in a mall, and I am exposed more than any of my other family members are who work from home or are doing school from home. So because of that factor, I am not able to see my grandparents for Thanksgiving, which is really disappointing, honestly, but completely understood. And I wouldn't have it any other way. I wouldn't want to risk exposing them to anything. So my Thanksgiving plans are involving just me, my mom, and my brother. And we are going to, my mom's gonna make baked macaroni, gluten-free and we are going to hang out at home. So that's what my Thanksgiving's gonna look like. At least I get the day off work. So we are doing our dinner on Monday, which is actual Thanksgiving. I will probably put this up a few days earlier, maybe Saturday morning, so that you guys have something to watch if you're getting ready for your Thanksgiving. I absolutely love watching Get Ready With Me event videos while I'm getting ready for said event. So if you're Canadian, definitely let me know what your plans are for this weekend for Thanksgiving. Are you seeing your family? Are you not? What's your circumstance? And then in the States, those of you who are watching in the States, do you have Thanksgiving plans already? I know my family and I waited until this week to see where we were at in our region regarding COVID to make our plans. So that there is how the foundation covered. Super, super nice, but you can definitely still see my glow from within underneath. So we're gonna go in and conceal my spots, which I have many of. This concealer is a little bit light for me, as you can tell. So I'll probably be looking fairly ghostly after all of this is blended out, but we'll go in and set it with my MAC Studio Fix, which will even everything out in the end, and then at least we have our coverage down. So if you've never tried this cover roll concealer, it is so amazing. You definitely need to. I've heard a lot of people comparing it recently to the Tarte Shape Tape, and I don't think it has quite as much coverage as the Shape Tape, um, and it's also not as drying, but I do prefer it over the Shape Tape. So I don't think they're dupes necessarily. They're quite similar, but I do prefer this one. So, and it's so much cheaper. And it does oxidize slightly. I can see as I'm going over these bits here, um, it has darkened a little bit since it's been sitting on my skin, which is a good thing in my case because it is a little bit too late for me. I'm gonna go ahead and blend this out with my same Sephora Collection sponge. And now I'm going to go in with the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Filter Powder in One Fair, just with a super loose fluffy brush and put that onto the under eye area kind of setting it, baking it in place. And I like to set the sides of my nose as well as my eyelids to make sure that everything stays in place there because I do tend to crease really badly on the sides of my nose and on my lids. Now that my skin looks super, super smooth and buttery, we are going to add in lots of color, glow, and dimension back into the skin. So I'm going to go in with my Butter Bronzer. This is in the shade Bronzer, and I'm going to use the same powder brush. I like to use the same brush because it keeps everything really, really smooth. We are going to do my cheekbones, and then we are going to go all over the forehead and maybe even do a tiny bit of nose contour. I've been playing around with that lately and liking it enough to keep trying it. Um, it is something new, but it does just add a little more definition to the face, which is always nice. So yeah, I'm just going to go in and do a very heavy bronze on the skin. Add some color back because we are looking super, super pale. Okay, and then we are going to attempt nose contour. So I'm going to use the Morphe M433 and put it in the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. And we're going to do a slight little nose contour, nose bronze, just to bring all the bronzer in. All right, so far so good, I think. Now we are going to go in with highlight and then blush. Then we'll set everything and move on to the eyes, which I'm super excited for. But first for highlight, we are going to go in with MAC Soft and Gentle. I just wanted to do something simple, basic, not too cool toned or too warm toned. 
because we're going to do more of a warm toned eye so I wanted it to go with that. So using my Morphe R36 favorite highlight brush and doing the very tip of my nose and then all over the cheekbones really working it into the skin and I bring my highlight all the way up the temple to the forehead because I like the look of a glow all along the perimeter of the face there. Now it is time to go in with blush and we're going to add in some of those pretty mauve warm tones for fall. So I have my Rimmel Blush Trio here, my absolute favorite ever, and I'm going to mix this deeper berry with this like kind of neutral mauve using my Sephora 93 brush. So I absolutely love this palette for fall. This Rimmel palette is consistently one of my favorite blushes in my collection. So I'm just going to mix these two shades together. Super, super pretty. I'm going to try not to go overboard with the blush, but I do love blush. It's one of my favorite parts of my makeup routine, but I'm going to try and keep it a little bit more muted today so that we can have more focus on the eyes. And then when I feel like it's blended nicely, I'm going to just go over it in like a wave and put a tiny bit onto my nose. I am going to go ahead and apply a tiny bit of lip liner now just that we have some warm tones so I can go with that with the eyes if you know what I mean. So this is Morphe Coffee and Kissy. One of my favorite fall tones. Morphe liners are like my favorite formula. They're so so good. So I'm just going to go ahead and overline the lips and then we will do the rest of the lips later and move into eyes. This lip color is such a pretty like pumpkin spice warm nude. This lip color is freaking perfect perfection for fall. I'm so into it. So hopefully I can create something really nice to complement it on the eyes. But first we are going to go in and fill in the brows. So I have some new three new brow products actually that I've been playing around with and enjoying. So I have the Velour Fluff and Brow Pencil. I've just been using the end that is like a teardrop shape, super creamy, kind of like the Anastasia Brow Definer. Then it has a nice spoolie. There's also this like wax pomade thing that I haven't played around with yet, but this is what I'm going to be using as the basis to fill in my brows. And then I've also been loving this tiny little Essence Micro Precise 1.5 millimeter waterproof brow pencil mine is in i guess there's not a shade name on here i can't see one anywhere but it's obviously the lightest blonde shade and it is super super tiny so i've been using this just to get the absolute front and tail of my brow and then i've been loving this covergirl easy breezy brow set gel we're just gonna go ahead film in hope for the best Oh, and my shade in the Velour Fluff and Brow is in taupe. All right, and then I go through and draw on the bottom to meet the top. And then I'm going to go in with my tiny, tiny Baby Essence pencil. You guys probably can't even see how tiny this tip is, but it's really, really good. I feel like more brands need to come out with this, like a super, super micro brow pencil. I just think it's such a genius idea. To set the brows in place, I'm going in with my CoverGirl Brow Gel. Now that the brows are all filled in to the best of my ability, I'm going to go in with the eyeshadow quad that I've been obsessed with lately. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Luxury Palette, and this one specifically is the Bella Sophia Quad. I have been using this to death. It is such a good quad for fall. So we're going to end with the burgundy shade there, which I think is number two, and we are going to use this to define our crease. Ugh, Charlotte shadows just blend so lovely. You don't even have to think about what you're doing. You don't have to put effort into it. They just blend so, so beautifully and create such a flawless look every single time. And these shadows are super, super pigmented, um, especially this one in particular. So a little really does go a long way. All right, now that that's blended out for the most part, I'm going to go in with three smoke and that is this shade there more of like a neutral brown and i'm going to smoke that on the lash line and the outer v a tiny bit with a nyx pencil super super precise pencil brush again not worried about being too incredibly precise with this and then with an elf blending eye brush kind of like a chubbier domed brush i'm going to just press that on the outer V 
And then going back into my Sephora Pro 19 and blending everything out a little bit, still keeping it rather sloppy and smudgy. Next, I'm going to go in and add some brown liquid liner. This is the Quo Beauty Liquid Precision Marker in Espresso 14. And I'm not doing a wing or anything crazy with this, just lining the upper lash line really pretty thin and precise. Now I'm going to go back into the Charlotte palette and take this pop shade here. And I'm just gonna take this right with my index finger and pat it pretty well all over the lid, but focusing more so on the inner half. And you can see how easily and beautifully this pop shadow applies just with your fingers. It's so nice and easy. It looks super, super pretty with this look, especially for Thanksgiving. And now I'm going to go back in with that Quo Beauty Liquid Precision in Espresso and sharpen up those lines. All right, and then my extra self is going to use two different mascaras, obviously. So for the upper lashes, I'm going to use the L'Oreal Bambi Eyes Mascara. I didn't like this the first few times I tried it, but I've been really Really into it lately so maybe it just needed to dry out a little sometimes that is the case and then for the bottom as always my Glossier Lash Slick because it doesn't transfer at all it's the only mascara I found that isn't waterproof that doesn't transfer and it's incredible so first building up the lashes nice and big and voluminous with the L'Oreal Bambi Eyes mascara so I do have a lipstick that I want to put on top of this liner not necessarily necessary but I just feel like doing it this is the MAC uh, cream sheen lipstick in cream in your coffee super super pretty color will go great with this liner so I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in the lips with this it's just a touch deeper than the liner shade is now lastly for gloss I'm going to go in with the original Fenty Beauty gloss balm in Fenty glow this is my go-to gloss if I'm doing more of like a warm toned lip so I'm gonna go ahead and apply this all over the lips to make them nice and juicy this is my completed Thanksgiving 2020 glam look using a ton of my recent favorite products. Nice mix of high end and drugstore, which I like to have on my channel. As always, if you did enjoy this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you aren't already. It really, really does help me out when you guys do those things to support my channel and it means a lot to me. So please do so if you liked this video or you want to see more content from me. And with that, that is everything that I have for you guys. I hope you guys had an absolutely awesome day and thank you so, so much for watching. Bye.